We ask that you be with us tonight and that you do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Like every woman, since the beginning of time, she gets down on her hands and her knees, and she washes her baby. He's only two months old, so he's still so small and so red and so wrinkly. She's just like prayer in motion. She gets down on her hands and knees. She set everything out, the little diaper and the cream, the new sleeper, the little towel with the hood on it. She's laid everything out. It's perfect. The water is warm, but not too warm, not too cold. Perfect for her baby. She's just like prayer in motion, the way she lifts that little baby up, as if it was a precious treasure. And she slips that teeny thing in the water. She sings to that baby with every handful of water. She sings to that baby, oh my, you're so beautiful. With every handful of water, she says, look at you so strong. Look at you so healthy. Look at you so beautiful. With every handful of water, she prays for that wrinkly little baby. Dear God, make this one strong. Dear God, make this one humble and kind. Dear God, make this one a force to be reckoned with in the world. With every handful of water on that little red baby, she says, oh, my, I can't wait to see what you will become. After she takes that thing out of the bath and dries off his little body and puts on that sleeper, she sits in her chair and she nurses him to sleep. Now she's a good disciples woman. <laughs> So she thinks to herself, did I just baptize that baby by accident? <laughs> like every disciple since the beginning of time, like every Christian since the beginning of time, I have questions for God. Questions about why some babies, some children are protected and why others are vulnerable and taken advantage of in the middle of the night. Like every disciple from the beginning of time, like every Christian from the beginning of time, I have questions for God about this war about whether we should be there, about whether we should come home, about what it's doing to the hearts and the minds of our men and women, about what it's doing to the hearts and the minds of the Iraqi people. I have questions for God tonight about our church, don't you? Why we spend so much time deciding what color the carpet in the parlor should be. And so little time praying for our brothers and sisters in Haiti because the infant mortality rate there and the illiteracy rate there and the life expectancy rate there. I have questions for our church. Why it's so divided racially and culturally and linguistically and politically. I have questions for God. Paul had questions for God. He was in prison because he was preaching the gospel. He was in prison because he was preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, scholars debate whether Paul wrote the letter to Ephesus or not, but I don't care about that. 
Most scholars, I think the best scholars, they agree on this, that that letter was written to the church in Ephesus, but it was written to all of Paul's churches, and it circulated to all of Paul's churches. It went to that church in New York City, Park Avenue Christian Church. And it went to that church in the Shenandoah Valley, Walnut Springs Christian Church. And it went to that little red brick church in the cornfields in southern Ontario, Mapleton Church of Christ. And it went to all the churches in the Kansas City region. Now, Paul's wrist must have hurt, because what are there, 80-some there? But he sent it to them. He wanted to encourage his people to inspire them, to call them to a new way of life. He says to them, he says to you, I'm begging you, live a life worthy of your calling. I'm begging you, live a life worthy of the name Christian. There is one faith and one hope and one spirit and one baptism and one God, inescapable, Father of us all, mother of us all. If you're feeling discouraged tonight, if you have questions tonight about the church or about the world or about the role of the church in the world, it's okay. Paul's writing to you. He's saying that God is calling you to be prophets and to be priests and to be evangelists and to be apostles, to be teachers, to embody in your flesh, to embody in your churches the good news of the gospel, which is this, love is stronger than hate. Amen? Embody the good news of the gospel, which is this, that peace that passes all understanding, it is stronger than any war on this earth. This is the good news of the gospel that you take home in your bodies and you make present in your church, that God's life is stronger than any form of death. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel tonight. You think you're sitting in a convention center, in the Fort Worth Convention Center. But if you have eyes to see, you know this is nothing but a big bathtub. <laughs> and the sweet spirit of God is just peering over the edge, and she's taken all of you in her hands and holding you like a treasure slipping you into this water, singing to you with every handful, oh my, this church is so beautiful. Oh my, this church is so healthy and so strong. With every handful of water, she pours it over you because there's one baptism and she pours it over your head and she prays to God, God, make this church kind and gentle to one another. God, make this church strong and bold and prophetic. God, make this church, the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, a force to be reckoned with in the world. People of God, there is one faith and one hope and one baptism and one sweet spirit of God, and she is here leaning over the edge of this place, pouring that one baptism on all of you, singing to herself, oh my, I can't wait to see what this church is going to become. People say amen.